crime of the law. We bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case files. story begins on the night of November 27, 1934, in Seattle's police headquarters. Headquarters? I want to report a stolen car. Stolen car? I'll connect you with the detective bureau. Headquarters? This is George Richards of the Richards uh, Lumber Supply Company. Yes, Mr. Richards? I just found out that my main store at 535 Elliott Avenue West was entered and robbed tonight. A robbery? Well, let me take this report. Uh, what was stolen, Mr. Richards? The entire store was ransacked. Every can of pink bond is stolen. Shuttle's clean right out. Every tool in the hardware department stolen besides. I see. You know how the place was entered? And well, the front door was jimmied open. It's the only trail they left, those jimmy marks in the front door. And what was the value of the stolen property, sir? Around $2,000. My whole stock wiped out. I want the police on this robbery right away. Yes, Mr. Richards. I'll give this report to Captain of Detectives immediately, sir. Very well. It's about time the police did something about these burglaries. Goodbye. Oh, Sweeney. Hey, Sweeney. Come on, slow freight. Hustle it up. Oh, come in. What's all the rush? What's up, Edward? Another phantom gang job. Ah, oh, you're crazy. That phantom gang pulled that periodical company job last night. <laughs> Tell it to Sweeney. I'm telling it to you, Sweeney. Come on, take this report into Captain Scrappin. Oh, he ain't in his office. Oh, trying to duck, eh? Well, he's in the chief's office here. Headquarters. Go ahead, fire department. <laughs> that phantom gang's got Captain Scrapper tearing his hair. <laughs> he won't make me a sergeant for bringing in this report. Lieutenant, this is Edward, sir. Reserves wanted, sir. Puget Steamship Dock on Fire. Captain, I want a full report on this lumber supply robbery first thing in the morning. Yes, sir, I can give you a full report now, Chief. No fingerprints, no clues, nothing. Just the jimmy marks on the front door. The calling card of Seattle's Phantom Gang. Well, we've got to get them. We've had a year of pillaging and plundering by a gang that's never yet left a trace. Chief, we're overdue on this fantastic ring, I know. Well, look, here's my own record on all those unsolved robberies. Sixteen of them. Yes, and not counting the repeats. Galbraith Lumber Company burglarized four times. Blue Street Candy Company three times. And none of the loot has ever been found. Yeah. None of the stuff stolen on these jobs has ever showed up at a pawn shop or a second-hand dealer. Or a fence. Or a fence. We've shadowed dozens of them. And look at the kind of stuff this phantom gang steals. Big stuff, expensive machinery, motors, and then... Then this. Cough drops, canned oysters, hams, bacon, tools, books, soup. Christmas tree light. Yeah. What about Lefty Connors? Have you checked on him lately? Lefty? He'd machine gun you for a song, Chief. But he wouldn't let those dumb mobsters of his bother with machinery. What about Ornoco? Ornoco is a number one suspect. Burglary like this is right up his alley. But I can't pin anything on him yet. Well, keep your man on his trail, Captain. This phantom gang has got to be wiped out. Have you any new ideas on it? Yeah. Little Butch Barrett has a pretty young sister, Sylvia. What about her? She just got engaged to Phil Sherman today. Phil Sherman? Yeah. One of our bright young cops. Marrying the sister of the smartest mob leader in Seattle. A killer, too. Say, Captain, you didn't put Sherman up to it, did you? Me? I'd never give a cop an assignment like that. It would be signing his death warrant. Little Butch thinks the sun rises on that sister of his. Well, how do you think Phil Sherman even got close enough to her to say hello? That's what I want to find out. Little Butch may be the works on this phantom gang. Anytime he lets a cop marry into his family, it's for no good reason. Yes? Oh, Edwards, Chief. Four alarm fire, sir. Four alarms now on the Puget Steamship dock fire. Big crowds all around the docks. All reserves requested. You get the reserves out. All precincts 5 to 14. And have all patrolmen and radio cars keep doubly watchful on their beats for burglaries. Special orders. Yes, Chief. Four alarm dock fire. Come along. You bet, Chief. Maybe little Butch is in the arson racket now to cover up a couple of other jobs tonight. Close to me, will you, sir? All right, Butch. Parade of the big bad fire. Nah, but this waterfront is swarming with cops. Big shots, too. 
Well, it's chief of police Kirtley, but a pile letter. The guy next to him is Scrafford, captain of the detectives. Oh, so that's Scrafford. Heard Bill speak of him. I can see Phil here. Yes, if Scrafford sees you with me, he'll know I'm not pulling off a job somewhere else in Seattle. Oh, why can't you go straight, Butch? I don't want the police to get my brother. Uh, well, the cops have got my sister, ain't they? Makes me look good with the mob, all right. They think little Butch is a new kind of stool pigeon. Marrying his sister to a club and badge. Well, don't you want me to be happy, Butch? Sure, Sylvia. You know I'd give you my right arm. But not your promise to get away from that mob. I can't. I'm in too deep. They wouldn't let me go. Which let's get away from Seattle. Phil can get a job somewhere else. I'd never quit the cops here. He's on his way up. Besides, here comes Scrapper now. Gee, look at those fireboats. The flames are getting high. Yeah, it's a great night for the cops, all right. Hello, Butch. Which would you want me to meet your sister? I happen to know her by sight. I think I got enough cops on. You ought to be nice to me, Butch. I might be able to help your brother-in-law. That is, if if your mob lets him live long long enough enough to marry your sister. Please, please. What are you trying to do, Scrafford? Tell me, Butch. How many jobs are you pulling off tonight under cover of this fire? You can't pin this phantom gang business on me. Who said anything about phantom gang? It's in all the papers. Are you marrying Phil Sherman because you think he's a policeman and the family will help your brother? Or... I'm marrying Phil Sherman because I love him. And if you don't stop hounding us, Phil and I'll leave Seattle. And take little Butch with you? That would look good for an ex-cop, wouldn't it? Phil can make good as a cop anywhere. He couldn't buy you clothes like those you're wearing on a cop face. Why don't you let us alone, Scrafford? If you're so fond of your sister, Butch, why don't you help her? Come clean about the Phantom Gang. Wash up the suspicion that's hanging over you and her and this young cop he's going to marry. Dig your own potatoes on this Phantom Gang, Scrafford. I'm not going to help you. Ever since I was a kid, all I got from a cop was the wrong end of a club. All right, Butch. If you get smart and change your mind... Let me know. Come on, Sylvia. Let's get out of here before this guy makes one crack too many. Come on. I'm coming. Jenny. I'm coming. Yes, Captain. Any orders? Yeah. Keep following Butch. What was he doing today? Well, he played card at Joe's place. Then this afternoon, about five, he took a ride down this way. Stopped over on 2nd Street near the Blue Street Candy Company. Blue Street Candy Company? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, I thought I, I was going to turn in a full report in the morning. The Phantom Gang has quack cracked the Blue Street Candy Company three times. They may be cracking it for the fourth time right now. Jenny, you follow little Butch. Don't let him out of your sight. Get going. Yes, sir. Boy, I'll watch him, all right. Sergeant. Sergeant Long. Yes, yes sir. sir. Sergeant Motorcycle Side Car. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm detaching you from fire duty. Jones. Sports. Parkins. Hey, Coming down. Here we are. Yes, sir. Listen. Sergeant Long and I are going over to the Blue Street Candy Place on 2nd Street near front. Get another squad car and six more men. Face them in behind us and round that block. Understand? Well, we got you, Peter. Remember, no sirens. Keep as quiet as you can. I want this to be a surprise. Come on. Here we are, Sergeant. Park in the shadow. That's the Blue Street factory down the street. Yes, sir. There's no light there at all. No. That gang knows its way around in there by this time. You follow me. Gun ready? Yes, sir. There's the door. Look, it's open. It's been jimmied open. Hmm. Come on in. Listen. Wait a minute. Someone in there. Who's there? Who's there? Speak up or I'll shoot. You speak up or we'll shoot. Who are you? I'm a police. Throw that flashlight over there. We're police, too. Here he comes. Why, it's Patrolman Jenkins. Oh, hello. Hello, Captain. I was passing by, sir. Noticed the front door had been jimmied open. So I came in and was just looking around when I heard you. I almost let you have it in the dark. Yeah. You almost got it, too. Never mind. This place has been robbed, all right. Look at those shelves. Cleaned up. Yep. I noticed it. They took their time, wherever they were. It's that phantom gang again. Hey, I thought they hired a watchman after that last burglary. Yeah, that's right, they did. I wonder where he is. Well, let's look around, all right? Here, hold your flashlight over here, Sergeant. Okay. It's a door. Huh. Looks like it leads to a kind of a cellar way, Captain. Yeah. Stand back and cover me, Sergeant. You too, Jenkins. Right. I'm going to open that door. Yes, sir. All right, Captain. Look out. Stand back. Good heavens. Will the saints have mercy? Watchman. 
At the foot of the stairs. He's been murdered. Say, uh, you know what I think? I think it's suicide. Now, that might be his own gun over there. And look. Look at the powder marks on the temple. Could he still be alive? No, he's dead, poor fellow. Look at that red blood on his white hair. Come on, men. Help me turn him over. And he was kidding that he had a sweet job in a candy factory. Headquarters. Say, there's a big hole out in the middle of Park Street. Steam pipe must have caved in or something. Park Street near where? Near 7th Street. You can't see the hole in the dark, and it's liable to wreck cars and hurt people, right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Car 19. Car 19. Go to Park Street near 7th. Park Street near 7th. Hole in Street. Arrange warning for automobiles. Place red lanterns. Oh, good evening, Captain. Oh, hello, Edwards. Say, where's the patrolman on that Park Street beat? I was just going to call his precinct. We're sure-handed on men, you know, sir. Any news on that watchman murder last night, Captain? Not a clue. This depression is breeding crime in more ways than one. Every department short-handed. Policemen doubling up on their beat. Oh, excuse me, Captain. Headquarters. This is the manager of the Harvey Electric Supply Company, number 11 Charles Street. I want to report a robbery. Harvey Electrical Supply robbery. What, another one? Go on, Edwards. Let's have it. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. I came down to the office late to go over some figures for a new job. I found the store ransacked. The door had been jimmied open. Hmm, store ransacked. Door jimmied. And that phantom gang again. I'll send a squad car right around, sir. You better. This town's getting to be a burglar's paradise. Bye. <laughs> Pretty sore. Car 15. Car 15. Go to Car Harvey. 15. Just a minute, Edwards. Isn't that Phil Sherman's squad car? Yes, sir. He's with Jack Miller. Call Sherman in right away. Send another man out to take his place. Go ahead. I'll get the chief to okay the order. I'll be in his office. Yes, sir. Car 15. Car 15. Officer Sherman, report to headquarters immediately. Sherman, report to headquarters immediately. Officer Miller, proceed to Harvey Electrical Supply Company, 11 Charles Street, robbery. Sherman, you're in a bad spot. Well, Chief, I don't know anything about that Harvey electrical robbery. And you don't know who killed that poor old watchman last night? No, Captain. That Harvey burglary tonight was on my beat. That's all I know. Sherman, do you take orders from the police department or from little Butch Barrett? Now, Captain, don't bring him into this. I love his sister, sure, and I'm going to marry her. Well, why don't you protect her, then? What do you mean? Sherman, Captain Scrafford means that you're holding something back on this Harvey robbery tonight. Are you trying to shield somebody, your future brother-in-law? Come clean, Sherman. Where were you when the Harvey saw was burglarized? Well, I was... I'm sorry. I took time out to eat then. What time was that? Well, about 10.30 tonight. Jack Miller and I were driving along Charles Street in a squad car, and Jack wanted to know if I wasn't hungry. Well, I was, and Jack said to grab a bite, so he dropped me off at the White Circle Hamburger Wagon. How long were you there? Oh, I... Until little Butch called you? No, no, I tell you. I was there for almost three hours. What? Off your beat three hours? All right, take my badge, Chief. But don't do anything to Jack. He said he was just calling on his girl. It was her birthday or something. You were calling on your girl? No, sir. Did you telephone her to put your sister? Well, yes. Then she knew you were off your beat. Well, I... Sherman, I want you to go out on your squad car route again. Right now. Oh, gee. I mean, thanks, Chief. Just a minute. If anyone asks you why you were brought in tonight, it's just a new routine I'm trying, understand? Yes, sir. If you talk, you're through. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Why did you let him off, Chief? I've got an idea. Does Sherman drive a car of his own? Yes, he has a little roadster. Does he drive it to work? Yes, keeps it in the department garage. Grafford, I have an idea. We're going to invest in a little oil stock. Oil stock? Yes. I want you to get a five-gallon can of motor oil and tie it under Sherman's car so he can't see it. Yes. Then I want you to have a plug made so it can be pulled out of the oil can when Sherman drives his car out of the garage. 
We're going to track him, understand? Yes, but why... Well, if Sherman saw a big pool of oil under his car before he drove out of the garage, he'd look under it and see the can, right? Chief, you're a fast thinker. We've got to think fast to keep ahead of this phantom gang. And remember that poor old night watchman. The coroner said they tried to make it look like suicide. Killed him with his own gun. I'd like to track down the man who did that. We'll track this phantom gang in oil. And have a man assigned to see that Sherman's oil is renewed every day. How about putting a can on Little Butch's car, too? Can you fix it? I'd like to see if Little Butch's and Sherman's oil tracks cross. I think it can be arranged. Good. See anything, Sergeant? Not yet, Captain. The armory across the street there is pitch dark. Are you sure those oil tracks came here? Yeah, two of them. We found two pools of oil in the street there in front of the armory after the cars had gone. Well, the National Guard armory is the last place you'd look for crooks. And that building's a regular fortress. Swell view overlooking Puget Sound. I... Who's that coming down the street? Get back in the doorway. It's a man in uniform. National Guard uniform. Sergeant. Sergeant Stripes? Yes, sir. He's at the armory door now. He's getting out keys. There he goes in. Well, the chief got me a key to that door this afternoon. Shall we go over and crash in? No. Take it easy, Sergeant. Maybe we'll get some more fish in our net. Wait a minute. There comes somebody around the corner. It's a patrolman. Mm Mm-hmm. Beat man, probably. What are they doing now? Just waiting there in the shadow of the armory. Recognize him? Mm-mm. Too dark, Captain. He's expecting someone. Maybe it's this car. Oh. It's a police squad car. And Jack Miller in it by himself. Wonder where his partner is. Jack Miller, eh? He's Sherman's partner in the squad car, isn't he? Yeah. Listen. Oh, no. Where's your car? Behind the armor, Jack. Always park it every day. Come on in. Sure. How to wait for you to be. Come on. There they go in. Bill. Bill who? Well, we could tell from his car. He said it's parked behind the armory every day. Yeah. But we can tell better by looking him right in the eye. We're going in, Sergeant. Come on. Two cops and an army sergeant. Up the steps, Sergeant. I have the key. Wow. Man, it's as dark as the inside of your hat. Take it easy. This is the drill floor. Nobody here. It looks like a stairway over here. Come on. Right with you. Watch out for these stairs. Another door. I'll just open it a crack. Careful. That room inside there is lighted. Take it easy. Uh, nobody here. Looks like the armory carpenter shop. Let's look around. Not a big closet. Yeah. Hmm. Carpenter tools. Nails. Paint. Here's a new electrical grinder. Two new portable electric saws. Where? Let me see. Here. The bottom of this cupboard. Pull away those rags in that burlap. Say, what is this? More saws and lamps. And what names do you see on them, Sergeant? Look. Get it? Richards Lumber Supply Company. Harvey Electrical. And say, Captain, all this paint is in the Galbraith Company. The one they knocked off four times. And we finally got them. Cracked in oil. Wait a minute. What's that? They're coming. Get ready, Sergeant. I'm ready. Turn out the light. Shoot. And turn the light on fast. Right. Hey. Who turned out that light? Hey, hey, stop. stop! Stop! Don't shoot! Turn on the light, Sergeant. All right. Captain Crawford. Oh, sir, come. Put up your hand, Jenkins. You too, Miller. Ah, oh, just a minute. What are your cops doing in this armory? You got my right shooting in here, being in my carpenter shop? Keep him up, Sergeant. Oh, so it's your carpenter shop, is it, Sergeant? I thought it belonged to the National Guard. Well, I'm regimental carpenter and caretaker of material. And how? You take care of material stolen by the Phantom Gang from lumber companies and electrical stores? Uh, that ain't so. No, no, Captain Eddie, don't. Sergeant Lee called us in here tonight. 
He thought he heard a burglar. Miller, you and Jenkins ought to be in the zoo, in the snake house. Yeah, that'll be tough on the snakes. Captain. Take their guns and clubs away and strip off their badges. Oh, it's a pleasure. Hey, just here in my uniform. You won't need that police uniform much longer, Jenkins. Where's the rest of the loot, Bill? Getting in your car, parked out behind the armory? Who else is in this with you? Oh. You want to play shut mouth now, eh? You can't make us talk, Captain. We know all the tricks. Yeah, maybe I've got one you don't know. Bring him along, Sarge. We'll send a van for the caretaker's material. Well, Captain, we got part of the Phantom Gang, but only part. Yeah, I know, Chief. Your investment in oil was a great idea. You must admit I used my head when I attached those oil cans to those other cars. They tracked Miller and Jenkins right to the armory. But the leader of this mob, the brains, is still loose in Seattle. And it looks like a big gang to me. Oh, Captain, no one knows we arrested those men last night? No, sir. They're being held incommunicado. Good. Makes my blood boil to think my own policemen are burglars, thieves, and maybe killers. But if we can keep this arrest quiet for one more night... Excuse me, Chief. Uh, here's that list you wanted, sir. Oh, all right, Sweeney. That'll be all. All right. Yes, sir. Captain, here's the record of all the patrolmen on whose beat those phantom gang robberies took place. Oh, I see. Dates of robberies, beats, patrolmen, and the night's off. Right. Now take a look at these precinct maps. Jenkins. Well, he was off his own beat that night of the Blue Streak murder. Sure. In there covering up. Probably helped rob that place and then had an alibi. Just going by. And look at this. Most of these robberies were pulled when the regular patrolman had his night off and somebody else was doubling on his beat. Exactly. We're shorthanded on police. And somebody had been tipping off the Phantom Gang on what beats are unguarded and when. And that's why a lot of these stores are cleaned out. The gang had lots of time and they knew it. But how can we put our fingers on the tip-off, man? Chief, this gives me an idea. You track this Phantom Gang in oil. Suppose I track them another way. How? Here's my plan. Tonight, in about ten minutes... Headquarters. Detective Woods, just a minute. Oh, yes, Captain. Edwards, Chief wants to see you right away. Special assignment. All right, Captain, but uh, who'll take over the switchboard? Well, I'll take it. it. Used to be my old job, you know. Come on, give me the headphones. Yes, sir. There you are. I'll see the chief. Hello? Hello? Police headquarters? Right. Is Phil Sherman there, please? Oh, Phil Sherman? Why, uh, I don't know. I'll see. Who is this? Well, never mind, please. Just tell him Sylvia called. Little Bush's sister, eh? Oh, Sweeney. Is that you, Edward? Yeah, this is Edward. This is Joe. Hello, Joe. What's up? Say, is there anyone on duty tonight down around First Avenue between 2nd and Virginia? Davis Lumber Company. Anyone on duty First Avenue between... No, nobody there tonight. Thanks, Edward. I'll be seeing you. Sweeney. Sweeney, hurry up. Yes, yes Captain. Ready. Take, take the board. Take these headphones. Yes. Remember your orders. Uh, yes, sir. Shall I flash everybody now, Captain? Edwards will be in jail any minute now. Yes, give him the works. And remember, Sweeney, tell those squad guards no sirens within hearing distance. Davis Lumber Company, right. First Avenue between 2nd and Virginia. Oh, Chief. Chief, they all set? All cars. All cars go to Davis Lumber Company, First Avenue. And... Posted, Captain. All ready, Chief. All right. Let him have it. Line him up over there. All right. Come on, line up, you hypocrite. All right. Nine burglars and five of your own policemen. Five more blots on the Seattle police. Look out, Chief. Look out. Oh, he got me. Nice work, Sherman. 
He'd have plugged the chief if you hadn't got him. Thanks, Sherman. It's all right, chief. I owe it to you for giving me this chance. Oh, I, I want to... I... Who are you? What do you want to say? I'm Joe Armstrong. I... I killed Night Watchman. I shot him. Oh. Joe Armstrong, the killer of the Night Watchman. Well, that's one member of the Phantom Gang who won't have to stand trial. Come on, Seattle's finest. Down to the jail to meet your pal Edwards. You're going for a ride in your own wagon. Be with us again when truth and justice triumph in the name of the law. (laughs) 